good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time of day it is, we sure do hope it's good for you. My name is Jeremy, and across from me is my good buddy Garrett. How are you, sir? Is this thing on? Are we, are we back on the air? Yeah, we, we still do this. You decided to record again? Dude, you're the reason we have it. No, Dude, no. Dude, you have been in contract disputes with me for the past three weeks because you don't think you paid enough for this. You don't have to air all our dirty laundry. Just admit that you're a nerd that can't stop studying. You cannot get enough of, what is it, anatomy? Anatomy. Well, anatomy and therapeutic procedures. Oh, therapeutic <laughs> procedures. That sounds like something you'd love. Yeah, well, I, I do kind of enjoy it. A quick explanation for you people. We... Uh, I, I have begun a program that's a pretty challenging program at uh, the college I go to, and it's for physical therapist assistant, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's taking up my time, and uh, unfortunately, as much as I love doing this, the hobby kind of had to take the back seat, because let me explain, you see, with, ther- with a physical therapist assistant, I'm going to have a job that pays me money, and with this... <laughs> this is a hobby, and this doesn't give me money. So you go where the money is, and I, I had to go where the money is. I had five tests the past two days, so I had a lot to do. Luckily, I graduated before we started this. Yeah, that would have been inconvenient. But it's I'm, very inconvenient for but me. But I'm going back. And that's the death of the show. No, I'm, I'm going to take one class. Yeah, no, but uh, yeah, we do ap- apologize for that long layoff. It was not intentional, just conflicting schedules and my busy uh Studying habits uh, kept us away from it. But we're back, guys. We are back. Uh, Today on the show, we're going to be talking about our hometown. We're going to talk about Athens, Alabama, and the things that we love about it, and uh, maybe give you a new appreciation for your hometown. A lot of our friends listen to this, and they live in the area, so uh, hopefully it will help you, if you live in this area, appreciate uh, the central northern Alabama. Uh, Then we'll have the Clash of the Wits. Then Garrett's going to share with us some home ownership uh things that he learned in buying a home he, he is in his first home now technically it's your first home you've lived in an apartment correct yeah i lived on the street until i was 21 yeah mm-hmm. well <laughs> i don't blame your parents <laughs> um no but he's gonna bring us some uh tips little things he learned maybe uh share a story i don't know i don't know what he has planned but I don't hopefully we <laughs> oh dear <What> am I doing? <laughs> okay well uh hopefully that segment will go well uh <laughs> then we'll answer some of your listener questions we do still have listeners so Woo-hoo. you know i was kind of impressed you know people were asking like yeah it's like people notice we're not recording yeah people lots of people came up to us at church and whatever asking most of them were kids but you know that's fine too. who was it though that was like someone told me it was like you have to record this show i I, you know, do my chores while I'm listening. That was Emma. I, yeah, it was Emma. Yeah. Shout out to Emma. Thank you, Emma. Now yeah. make sure you get your room clean. Yeah, that's right. No, uh, I did say that, that the kids were the only ones that said anything to us. I love that. I love that the kids come up to us. So I definitely don't feel bad about that. It didn't mean anything uh, ill-intended towards the kids at all. We love them. We absolutely love that they listen. Because they're the only people that listen. They're not the only Just people, kidding. but... They're, they're a great majority. I enjoy that. Uh, we're going to uh, give you a listening assignment. This is the longest preview of the show we have ever had. And uh, then we have a surprise segment here at the end that we're going to try out. We'll see if we enjoy it or not. But uh, anything, anyway, we think we'll, we will enjoy that. So to get started, uh, our hometown. We live in uh, Athens, Alabama. Uh, it's kind of in between, uh, let's see, Huntsville and Florence, I guess, and I guess that'd be about Decatur. Middle, Decatur, yeah. They're in central uh, northern Alabama. And uh, I was just going to share a couple things that I love about it. You can uh, chime in and tell us what you love about it. But one of my favorite things about it is it is a small town that grew into a city. I mean, it still has that small town feel, um, but we're on the interstate, so we have a lot of different choices in terms of places to eat, places to shop. Lots of chicken joints. Lots of chicken Athens, Alabama Chick-fil-A, loves chicken. Chick-fil-A, Zaxby's, Roosters. KFC. KFC, Bojangles. That's just Man. off the top. I mean, we're getting like, a Buffalo look, Wild look, Wings. Uh, Touchdown Wings. Touchdown we're Wings. Getting a, we're getting a Buffalo Wild Wings? You didn't know this? His what? day was just made. Yeah, My day? By, <laughs> I'm seriously about to cry tears of joy. <laughs> it's, by, it's by Publix. I didn't know that. Yeah, man. But uh, anyway, so we got a lot of chicken places. 
but we're still we still have that hometown vibe everyone's nice to each other most people it's hard to go to the athens walmart and not see somebody you know i'm sure those that live here can or can cracker barrel. to that cracker barrel is a good example as well um but you, you see people you know all over the place and i love that it's just it's great it's just great uh also along with that is you know i'll touch on this more in a second but the people here so many are god fearing there are so many churches here in limestone county and that's a real blessing this is kind of like a little sanctuary as it were we live here in the in the bible belt and uh i've heard other people say that they have wished that they lived in limestone county and i didn't you know this is where we've always been i've only lived in this area my whole life so uh i've as i've grown up i've noticed what a blessing that is so yeah well you know i uh you still live in harvest but i i lived in madison we actually moved up here you know like 15 years ago or something and um we lived in madison harvest area but all my friends were in athens Right. And everyone I knew was in Athens. And I really, you know, growing up, part of it was just being a little kid, going to Athens high school football games. I always wanted to go to Athens high school, go be a part of the Athens. So right. finally we moved when I was 15, not really for the reason, just so I could right. go to Athens, but just because it was closer to everything we did. And so I've just kind of grown up loving the loving the town and loving, loving Athens. So. Right. Like... One of the things that uh, he talks about being a, a part of Athens, I don't live in Athens, and I wish I did, but I, I live on the outskirts, and uh, I, I wish that I lived here in the in the metro. You, can you call Athens? You can't no. call that. But I don't know what else. In, in the town, actually, but uh, sadly, I do not. But, you know, the benefit of northern Alabama, at least this section of northern Alabama is you can drive 20 30 minutes pretty much in any direction and you can see all kinds of things you, there's uh country rural how do you say that word rural rural, rural. Uh, <laughs> uh parts of the county you can see uh fields you can see barns tractors all that kind of thing so you get that country uh down home feel but then you can drive uh 20 minutes and you can be in Madison which is not like that at all. Huntsville's Inside, growing up. Huntsville as well, but Madison's kind of the rich kid area, so you can mm-hmm. see this really preppy area, and that's that's nice to experience. It's nice to have those stores that come along with that and the amenities. So, <laughs> <laughs> big word for you there. Nice. Oh yeah. No, but uh, yeah. So I I love that. I love the location. How everything's really convenient and. In this area of Alabama, you can drive uh, about two hours north or two hours south, and you can go to big cities, mm-hmm. but you don't have to deal with that all the time. So yes. I think it's a really convenient place to live, and I love it. But kind of what I wanted to really hit on and, and drive home and talking about this is the people make where you live. And I, like, I would not enjoy Athens if I didn't have the friends that I did here. And uh, so wherever you live in the country... Uh, maybe you live in a different country. Enjoy the people that are there. Make friends. Make those connections because it really doesn't matter where you are in the world. It's the people that you have around you. Anything you would want to say to that? Yeah, I've noticed, you know, there's a lot of loyalty to your hometown. Um, one thing that I've gotten to do, being around, you know, high school band, high school football uh, for a while, is like it's really cool to go to different small towns mm-hmm. and see everyone get excited about the the high school local high school team and see how they decorate the town and everybody comes together and you know it's it's just cool and I you know it's I, I my sister's you know the drum major for um, Athens High School and I I enjoy going to the games and seeing people that I went to high school with and seeing you know just people around the community and. You know, Amber's sister, your girlfriend Alyssa is a drum major. I enjoy going to Clements games. Oh, yeah. So Yeah, I I've really enjoyed getting to do that. Being homeschooled, that wasn't something that I got to experience. I mean I could have, but not with the loyalty aspect, I guess. But uh now that Alyssa's been the drum major, uh she's the drum major this year for her high school and last year. Uh I've gotten to see different different high schools, watch their football teams, that kind of stuff. Most of the time, it's pretty terrible football. But Mm -hmm. the fact that uh, you get to watch these – for me, I get to watch my girlfriend perform and that kind of thing, and that's really cool. But you get to see that really – I don't know how to explain it, I guess, country 
atmosphere in most places, especially with the county schools. You get that cool experience where everyone's really tightly knit, and that's something that you can definitely appreciate, especially here in northern Alabama. I guess all Alabama is this way, but high school football is a big thing. One downside to living in northern Alabama is there are far, far too many Alabama fans hey, for now. anyone to be able to stand. I don't know how people can live here. But, uh, no, uh, the, the, rival- the rivalry is uh, a lot of fun, and that, that's a part of just being in the state of Alabama. So but, you know, there's a lot of true. Tennessee fans in this area, too. Yeah, the but weird they, ones. They've kind of been uh, pretty bad the last ten years. They've been Almost quiet. had a couple, you know, pretty good years. Right. Tennessee has a really been pretty bad for a long time so they're kind of quiet and look at that we're back to football so it's pretty easy so. yeah it's well it's the time of the year i mean yeah. it's just in the air dude the, the leaves are falling i mowed today and I, I was mowing leaves all over the place and i was just so excited when you're driving on those rural roads <laughs> uh, there, there are leaves blowing everywhere I, I don't know what it is about that i just love it but tangent well, well it's getting it seems like it's too early for the leaves to change well, they today is the first day of fall. Yeah, but they're they're it's been changing for like two yeah, weeks. They have, it seems like they have. It's just it's, been dry. It's not it's not cold enough, man. I know it's. Somebody Another, said it's the first day of autumn, and I was like, it doesn't feel like it. Yeah, yeah, it feels like mid August. <laughs> but uh, no, they that is a downside. Something I did want to mention is uh, there are a lot of upsides this area. The downside is, like I said, the Alabama fans, and <laughs> also the fact that it is just hot. It gets really, really hot here and really humid. It wouldn't be so bad if we could expect it in the summer and then it'd change in the fall or it would not be that way in the spring. But it bleeds over for like half of the spring and half of the winter, yeah. uh, half of the fall. And But, but you know, know, it's crazy. You, you, you do get to experience every kind of weather in this area. I know, I yeah. Mean, it's gotten down to like 8 degrees the yeah. last two years. Yeah, so, I mean, so you go from in one part of the year be a hundred and two degrees, and then go all the way down to eight degrees. Yeah, that that's that's another great benefit of this area is that you have when a snow does come and it sticks, it's gonna be there and it'll be there enough for you to play in the next morning. But then by the afternoon, it's gone. You can get back to your work, get back to your daily living. Well, that's which, a great thing. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> but usually the days the days canceled or whatever, but. Yeah. Uh, that I do enjoy that the fact that we don't have to worry about icy roads all that often. Every once in a while we get one that will linger, but usually it's gone. By now the downside is with that kind of weather, it's really prone for tornadoes. It is. It is tornado. We're, well, we're not technically in what's called Tornado Alley, but it feels like it. Yeah, we're like its brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that there have been uh, multiple days in the near uh, last five yeah. six years. Yeah, that have been horrible. So that's definitely a downside, but you know, get a little, you get a little taste of everything. So, but yeah, we love it here. And uh, if you're ever in the area, make sure to uh, stop and enjoy it for a little bit. We have the, you got the the square in downtown Athens, and I think it's like storytelling going, festival. That's a good. Thing oh, that's one of my favorite things ever. That's one of the things that made me want to do this podcast. Actually, was the storytelling festival. So I absolutely love that. And uh, the square. It's like going back in time, and uh, mm-hmm. it's this little part of Athens that's just in. It's like they're in a time warp, and they're they're never leaving. So that's actually where I work is on the square. So I get to experience that. So that's pretty cool. So you know, we live in America. We live in Alabama, uh, and that will transition us into uh, the first joke for the Clash of the Wits. Uh, do you know what the best uh, best thing about socialism jokes is? What? Uh, everyone gets them. <laughs> Oof. Who was that? That was Stevens. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, Steven. it's, I, it's funny, That's... but his are often political. <laughs> yeah, but you know, That's pretty good. I mean, it's it's, it's I've it's heard right. worse, we'll, but we'll I've heard better how... too, Stephen. I yeah. mean, you got up your game just a little bit here, I think. Yeah, Justin may catch up. Let's see what he does. Uh, did you hear that? Did you hear the Energizer Bunny was arrested over the weekend? He was charged with battery. <laughs> 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 I mean, from our reactions, Justin's was better, but yeah, you know, I Stevens mean, was a little. Um, it's like a, what you'd hear a college professor tell. Yeah, yeah, you would think it's <laughs> like hilarious. Government class, yeah. yes, yeah, it's a dry humor <laughs> joke, but uh, I don't know. I guess we'll 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 leave the vote to the end. Don't let me forget that. But we'll leave the boat to the end. Something we didn't mention that we neglected is Caleb is not with us today, and Corbin is off at college. So we have a new 
uh, temporary uh, fill-in. I don't producer. know what what we would call him, but a uh, temporary uh, producer, uh, Joshua Volander, who is Caleb's uh, uh, brother. So we really appreciate him stepping in. He kind of looks like Caleb. He looks a lot like Caleb, just darker hair. But yeah, uh, no, we really appreciate him uh, stepping in and giving of his time to help us out. It's good to have another person here to, you know, do all the technical side. I things, guess the so. Volanders are just natural naturals on uh, computers. Yeah, well, they seem to be, and uh, they're some of my good friends, and so they they often they have to help be us good up. friends. I mean, they're, yeah, they <laughs> they are <laughs> they are connected to my family. So, yeah, but uh, yeah, so a big thanks to Joshua. All right, man, what you got on home ownership? We've talked about uh, our hometown, so I guess we're just keeping a home vibe here. We'll and just call this episode home, home, just home. No, uh, it's been quite an experience. Uh, I was really, like, nervous and scared about buying a house, to be honest with you. Uh, I can see why, yeah. Yeah, you know, me and Amber were at a point in our relationship where we kind of were ready to to get married, and I wanted to have a house and a job, and so I got the job that uh, where I felt like I could afford a house, so I started looking, and with right. the help of Miss Kathy and Laurent Presnell, mm-hmm. they helped me find a, what I think is the perfect house for me. Like, I love, I love this house. Yeah. Um, but in the last, it, I, I've had it about six months now. I moved in on April first, uh, closed on April first, so about six months exactly. I've uh, I've I've learned a lot. Like surprised myself how much I've learned in the last six months. Yeah, um, I'll give you a quick taste into my life. Like I'm I'm at the point where I'm getting closer to being able to move out and being wanting to move out to have that independence and that kind of thing. But. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that I think right now that my life would be if I uh, moved out. I have these, you know, predetermined ideas and that kind of stuff of what it would be like. But I'm sure that once I move out, mm-hmm. it's going to be like a ton of bricks hit me in the face, not knowing what to do. So I don't. I mean, even looking for a house, all the loan stuff, that kind of thing. That's that's got to be. A it big can be overwhelming. Experience. That's the first thing that I would say I've learned is it's you're taking on so much responsibility. Right. And but when you're actually thinking about how much you're taking on, like before you actually do it, it seems like, wow, how am I going to be able to do this? I mean, Mm -hmm. do I know for sure that I'm going to be able to pay for everything I can pay for? And even if I can pay for it, how am I going to know, like if something happens, like if I'm in a car wreck, like I'm going to have enough money to be able to pay for the deductible or whatever. Right. So, but when you start doing it, and you make smart decisions, get good advice from people, and that's one thing that I did was I got a lot of advice from people like, "Is this too much? You know, is this a good decision?" And so, if you take good advice from people that have been there, it makes it a lot easier when it's actually happened. Now I don't really stress about it. You know, if something terrible were to happen, right? Uh, I would be I would be stressed, but like I know that I have the ability to. To do what I need to do, right? That reassurance that you have the yeah, you, you have a good job, so you have that income, and plus the people around you. If something were to happen, it wouldn't be the. Yeah. I, I don't think it'd be the end of the world. But I mean, <laughs> it's not just a responsibility in making sure you can pay for everything. It's like taking care of the house is a big job, right? Especially uh, living on your own. I mean, you didn't just buy a starter home. I mean, in some in some walks of life, maybe it's a starter home, but like that. <laughs> that's not a starter home in my opinion no it, you got like what three bedrooms and a three sunroom? bedrooms <laughs> yeah it's you know my parents are surprised kind of like how clean I keep it because right. I was a, like terribly nasty person but I you know my room would get right, right. messy you're a teenage somebody, guy you don't got time for those clothes. now that I own it it's like and I'm, that's another thing I've learned just to sit, the sense of ownership is when it's when it's yours, you make sure that you take care of it. You keep the grass cut as best you can. You uh, make sure the floor is swept. You make sure you mop it. And I was like, I, I would never would have thought like five years ago. I would like, <clears throat> all right, Saturday morning, I got to get up, I got to mop, I got to, right. I got to vacuum, I got to <laughs> clean the toilet, do the laundry, clean the toilet. I, but I think about that now, so I guess I should be proud of myself. I guess I sound kind of lame with that, but no. Nah. I mean, hey, I think that the, I think that there's some pride to be had in taking care of the things that that are yours and, and taking that responsibility, doing things that maybe stereotypically you wouldn't do. Like you're waiting on the time to get married uh, with the date set, just waiting for that date to roll around, and 
I can see how one could get very complacent and just like, well, here in you know yeah. so and so months, I'll be married, and then there'll be a homemaker here, and and you're not that way. So no. I, that's a that's a very good way to be. I've 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 slept in your home, I guess twice, and I've been over there a few other times, and it's very it's very nice. It's very well kept up, uh, and I, I'm impressed because knowing you, I mean. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have been surprised if it had been messy. Not yeah. not any knock against you, but I mean, I mean, I'm not gonna say it never gets messy, but right. it's cleaned one at least once a week. So you that's know, pretty, that's pretty much, man. I guess during the week it kind of gets messy because I get busy, right? Um, but then like Saturday mornings normally, I'm like, I'm gonna get it all cleaned up. So I start the laundry and that's pretty start cool. start the cleaning the floors, cut the grass, right? Turn on the football game. I, you know, since football season started a couple weeks ago, I'm like, I've got to get everything done before 11 o'clock. Right, That's right. when the games start. <laughs> That's right. So you get up early. Or at least Saturday. get the outside <laughs> stuff done because I can watch the game while I'm doing all the other stuff. Or right, watch fold, games. Yeah. Fold laundry. Uh, I, I'll ask you what uh, what kind of things did you learn in looking for a home? I know that just through the grapevine, there were certain things, certain houses that you had looked at and very serious about and, some, and it got taken out from under you, for lack of a better term. Well, it is good, very good to have someone who uh, you're planning on getting married to to look at the houses with. Okay, so don't get a house unless you're about to get married. Well, guys. just kidding. I would say because you know my guy, pure like do the perfectly the cheapest the right you your know, instinct the 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 guy instinct. I mean. Amber uh, really kept me from buying some houses that would have been, they've been good houses, but they wouldn't have been great. Right. You know, and it, it was, uh, we looked for about four months at yeah. houses, you know, off and on. We didn't look all the time. We would take breaks, but, and some of them that I was like, Amber, you know, this is a, you know, this is a cheap house. It's in pretty good shape. I mean, there's a few quirks about it. Right. But, uh, you have, you know, you have to walk outside to do the laundry. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> there was the house. You had uh, so it was like a carport situation? Yes, uh, it had a carport. I mean, the inside was pretty nice. It was a lot smaller. We would right. not have, you know, it was. It would have been a starter home. Right. You know, we like this house that we have now, I feel like I can live in for, I feel like I could live there the rest of my life I if I wanted to. I completely agree. And yeah. I wouldn't have a huge problem with that. Right. Maybe one day I do want to, we do want to build, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah, um, I mean, location goes into that some. You're kind of out there on the outskirts. That may be what you like, but uh, yeah. I've lived in the outskirts all my life. So when I have an opportunity to buy a home or get an apartment, you can rest assured if I can afford it, I'm going to be somewhere closer to town. Yeah. <laughs> but Or at least close to my daily walks of life, work, school, whatever. Yeah. Well, another thing I've learned is that have, having good neighbors is awesome. Really? I haven't heard about your neighbors. You haven't told me. Yeah. Well, um, when we lived in Madison, my family lived in Madison, we had some decent neighbors across the street that were okay. Mm-hmm. But really, otherwise, we didn't talk to um, any of them. The ones beside us were weird. I mean, <laughs> I won't get into it. Neighbors, yeah. They were very strange. We never talked to them. All right. Uh, where my parents live now, we have a really good one really good neighbor who is a Christian, uh-huh. but she's even still pretty far away. I mean, right. my pa- parents live like they have about three acres of land, so right. they're kind they're of off the road, yeah. pretty far. Well, you know, I get I'm a you know a 23 year old guy, uh, single, don't have anybody there. Uh, most you know, unless you know my family or Amber's family comes over or something, and I have um, a couple beside me. They have two kids. Um, and you know, they've been very welcoming and, you know, when I, when we went on vacation, they took care of Duke. They, um, have said, you know, if I need anything right. to, uh, let them know the neighbors, uh, the other neighbors on the other side of me, they've been wonderful. They're an older couple, uh, got grandkids. Um, he let me use his rod lawnmower when I first oh, wow. moved yeah. in. He yeah. saw me, I have a really big backyard. Right. And I didn't have a rod lawnmower, and I was pushing it. And I, I mean, that's fine. Right. I mean, I'm you know I can handle it. But he saw me, and he just it, he had never met me before. Like I had, it was like maybe two weeks after I moved in. You could be a psychopath. I could be anybody. Right. And he offers his rod lawnmower to me. That's I awesome. mean, just a genuine guy. Right. Um. So he's just 
really been really been nice. He told me same thing. Told me if I ever need anything. Right. Um. So I mean, it's just really nice to know that you can. Um. That there's somebody there to depend on. Right. Right. So. Yeah, I, I can, I can attest to that. I mean, we've had a lot of neighbors. I've lived in the same house all my life, so we've had a lot of neighbors come and go. But there, there are some. One time, a guy just randomly mowed our yard while we were out, while we were out of the house. We weren't even out of town. He just came over and mowed our yard, and when we came home that day, it was, it was perfectly mowed. You know, really? so like I mean, people like that. It's, you can. That's very something you can treasure and cherish, and. Uh, you know, I mean, us as neighbors, and we're supposed to be the light of the world, we should be doing the same thing for our neighbors. So. Well, that's kind of what I've thought about is, like, I'm like, how how can I be a good neighbor to them? You know, it sounds funny, but making sure that your grass is cut is a way to do that because their grass is always nice to cut. If you're right. just growing up everywhere, right. you know, they'd probably appreciate it if you did it. So I try to keep mine cut. Right. Uh, you know, at least I, I try to cut it once a week. Yeah. Um, Stuff like that, making sure your, your house looks presentable, and you know, being if you see something that they need done, just just go ahead and do it for them. Right. So, because I like I said, I'd never had neighbors like that. Everybody just kind of kept to themselves, and it's really it's really just a cool thing. So yeah, yeah, I, I agree. That's that's a good way to be. That's a lesson for all of us. So, um, the one thing that I was going to ask you right quick is, uh, as we kind of close up this segment, did the location, um, how much of a how much of importance was that? Because you you don't even work in Athens. You live 15 minutes from Athens at least. Yeah. Um, I would say that that was the biggest downside was uh, the location. Right. Um, it's not something that I'm like, oh, I want to move out of this location as soon as possible. No, I, I like I like where it is. I've come to like more where it is. Uh-huh. Um, but if, um, if you don't like a long commute, then you know yeah then make sure you live close to where you work uh, I don't mind a long commute that much really the only the thing that it bothers me the, the most about it is when I when I just need something from the store real quick right there's a Dollar General it's like seven minutes away but right. it's hard to do grocery shopping really at Dollar General which I don't do a ton of grocery shopping <laughs> right but when I need like when I, if I need some milk or something yeah I, it's it can be kind of difficult to yeah okay I gotta go 20 minutes more like the other yeah. day I needed we were having a thing at work that uh, like a pilot kind of thing at work, and I was supposed to bring something, and I, I had gotten home from church on Wednesday night. And I was like, "Oh man!" So uh-huh. I had to go all the way back to Walmart and get it because oh, I knew wow. Dollar General wouldn't have it. Wow. But stuff like that, it's I mean, it's it's not something that I'm like yeah. I can't stand this. Yeah, but well, that's that's one thing that I know of. I've done very little home. Uh, we've like I said, we've never moved. We've looked at other houses, and one thing I've just observed is there's going to be a downside. No matter what, yeah. So it's picking the downsides that you can live with and ones you can't. So yeah, that's that's a lot of good advice. Anything else you wanted to say? Right Not away? really. Right. Um, one thing I would add about the location is, you know, I kind of expect as you know when me and Amber get married, our lives to kind of shift where we, you know, we'll still do stuff in Athens, obviously, but we'll probably do more stuff in that area. Our kids uh-huh. will go to school there, stuff like that. Just like. Right. You know, when I went to Athens, my family pretty much did stuff in Athens. Right. So as our kids go to school and we do, we get to know people out there. I mean, it probably won't be nearly as much driving it as it is now. Um, So, you know, you just adjust. Yeah, you do. You do. All right. Well, this week's listening assignment, guys. uh, We'll knock that out right quick. It's called "Hard Love" by Need Two. The number two breathe and uh, need to breathe is one word. They spell it as one word. So I've never heard that song. Uh, you actually have. I've played it for you here at Caleb's. Uh, I think the last time we recorded. But uh, well, anyway, it's a I it's, don't remember that. it's a good one. Uh, I really enjoy it. It's a uh, so you know a little obscure. So go check that out. I don't know if it'll be your style or not, but uh, go check it out. Maybe Garrett, you should check it out too. Then. I'll try to check it out again, but I probably won't remember it. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think I, I mean I remember y'all playing music. Right. I just don't remember what it was. So. Well, we were interested in speakers. We weren't interested in the substance. substance. Yeah. This week's listener questions, Gable Duke has always gave us one, and uh, he asked, what's your favorite hobby? And I'll answer mine right quick. Uh, usually playing sports, is uh, playing sports, so basketball, ultimate frisbee, football, that kind of thing. There's also, I like to juggle a lot, so you could call that a hobby, I suppose. 
suppose. But uh, right now, Trump's all of them is studying. No, I'm just kidding. Is, <laughs> uh, the podcast is, is probably my favorite hobby for sure. Well, favorite hobby. You know, I've never. Um, I've heard people say they have a favorite hobby. I've never sat down and organized mine. You know, I just kind of do what I, I like to do. I like right. um, Alabama football, Alabama basketball a lot. I'm real like really really. <laughs> Almost religious follower of, of Alabama football right. and basketball. I could tell you so much about them. Yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> okay. And then also, uh, this is my surprise some people. Um, they don't know me very well. Aquarium keeping. Yeah. I love aquariums. I, I have a 50 about. gallon aquarium at home. That I helped you move. He helped me. Jeremy helped me move it. I'm really like proud of it. Really nice looking. Yeah, that's 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 a cool thing, man. So I love it. Yeah, it's a neat maybe I need thing, to talk man. about that sometime. Yeah, man, bring it. Yeah, bring us some information. I'll try to bring the fish. aquarium or something. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throw it in the back of the cobalt. Yeah. Uh, Matthew yeah. asked us, uh, "What is your favorite Star Wars character?" And I would say for me, it's either going to be Yoda or uh, uh, Darth Vader. And I know what you're thinking, Darth Vader. He's the villain. He is the coolest villain I have ever seen. Yeah, he's cool. I, I really just enjoy watching like the light reflect off of his helmet. I'm sorry, I'm weird. Yeah, he's so, he's just a, such a cool villain. He's so like I most know. of the time he's, so, he's like so calm and like right, right. Yeah, I like him. Uh, Yoda's always one. I like Luke Skywalker a lot. He has mm-hmm. to overcome a lot. He does. He does. To, be who he's destined to be. Right. That sounds weird. I but. just like the way Yoda <laughs> talks. I mean, it's the most entertaining thing to me. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah. So there you go, Matthew. Uh, Galaxy Explosion one four five one on SoundCloud. We did find out who that is, and uh, but I won't I won't say it on here. I don't know if she wants people to know who she is, but oh, she's a girl though. <laughs> um, and she asked, "What's your favorite book?" And the Bible. Oh. No, but uh, of course that's the that's our favorite book. But I think you mean uh, the in terms of literature that um, for. Uh, entertainment I guess Mm -hmm. I would say for me one of mine is uh, let's see what's it called I forgot to think about this ahead of time Uh, I think it's called The Westing Game is that a book? I I think that's what it's called I you really love this book game I read it in school I can't remember but it's it's kind of a it's kind of a mystery type book so I like mysteries and as a kid I liked uh, Encyclopedia Brown so there you go yeah See, I'm probably gonna disappoint some people. I'm not a huge reader. I don't hate reading. I don't like to read either. I don't. I don't hate reading. If I can get uh, a time and a book that I really enjoy, right? You can't pull me away from it, right? Um, it was like that for me with the uh, Harry Potter series. Okay, those uh, pulled me in, and mm-hmm. when I got into those, I I would just sit there and read for hours. I didn't know that. Yes, um, I. I read all of. Them. I don't know if I ever officially read the first, the first one, but you know, about the fourth one on are the best. You know, just pure fictional books I've ever written. They just, I don't know. She, she's a really good author in that she. Sometimes, like with Lord of the Rings, I like those, but there can be so much detail in those to me that it, it right. kind of gets boring. Right. She does just enough where you're like interested in the. Ex- extraneous details, but keeps you on the story, and I just she's really good to me. Enmity so. and extraneous; those are your words of the day, apparently. Yeah. Uh, well, Harris on Facebook, he asked us, "Hey guys, what is your favorite way to de-stress?" And this is a very relevant question to me because of my five tests. Favorite way to de-stress? That the best way for me is to distract myself. So. I oftentimes will uh, look to entertainment. I like to watch YouTube videos, uh, YouTubers on there. Uh, so I'll watch them a lot. I like Rick and Bubba. Uh, <laughs> I lo- well, not local. They're, they're nationwide now. But uh, radio sta- radio show, I like to listen to some of their best of that kind of stuff. So that that's probably the best way. I like to de-stress biking. That's yeah. fun, too. And running, that kind of thing. Do some exercise. Some exercise. What about you? Uh, I don't have one set thing. I uh, I like you know take my dog for a walk around the block. That's I'm always really relaxed when I do that for some reason. Right, right. Um, you know they say that in aquarium keeping, just watching fish oh, yeah. has been shown to lower stress levels. So yeah. I don't know if I've I wonder always, if that has to do with the way that they swim. You know, just the fluid motion. Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of it's just distracting. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if I would say I do that to de-stress, but I do it a lot. So right. Relaxing. Yeah. Let me ask you a, quick, a personal question. Are there a lot of stresses in Garrett Horn's life? 
at the moment. Stresses. I mean, you got work, but does that? I mean, does that go home with you? Uh, it can. This is a very personal question. <laughs> uh, it can if you know if you uh, you don't feel like you're advancing like you need to, which I think I'm doing fine with that. But there can be you know can be up and down. Right. Uh. So yeah, it can if you make a mistake, and even right. if you know it's not going to be like a huge deal, it's like you know they they knew I made that mistake, so it's going to stick in their mind. Right. Uh, but no, I mean, there's nothing super stressful. I mean, feeling yeah. pretty good. Yeah, life life is on the upside. Money is always a stressor. Right. You know? It just it, is it can be you, it can be too much of a stressor. You know, you just got you don't need to worry just to worry about it. Right. You know, like the Bible says, but. You always, you always, I would say you always have to think about it. Right. So. Keep it, keep it in the back of your mind at least, I guess you're saying. Yeah. Uh, so that's the, the questions we got this week. Um, I guess the past couple weeks. But uh, <laughs> uh, go ahead, something that we mentioned last episode. If you go on iTunes and look for our show, if you could leave a, a uh, review, comment and review there on there, that really helps us out. Uh, we haven't gotten any of that yet. And uh, I, if you uh, did desire and uh, would do that for us, that helps us out. So if you could go on there and do that, that would be appreciated. Uh, do I need to say please? Please. Demand it. Do it now. No, but uh, anyway, you know, it, it helps us out, helps us grow. But this is this is for uh, for your entertainment. So let, let people know you're entertained. Entertained. That, that helps us out. Uh, so the surprise segment, we'll hit this right quick before we close. Uh idea that we have from a listener and I think it's a great idea um, we call this the best advice in the world fanfare. Uh, trumpet fanfare yeah. <laughs> on this segment we're going to be giving uh, the best advice in the world to uh, someone we won't mention who, who asked so it's anonymous but uh, somebody that needs some advice so this week uh, what's the best way to inform someone that you're interested in him or her so you know get your get your crush to know what you think uh, that you're thinking of them, interested in them. I would say um, this this kind of a that you have a small window to do this, but if like a grant graduation special event that kind of thing, um, signs or banners, that's always a good idea. Really, really brings the attention to the matter, and uh, I think that's what you're going for there. Bring the attention. So, what about you? See, I take the opposite approach. I say if you like them, you clam up, you make sure that they don't know it, and just leave it be. I mean, right. Internalize it. Internalize I mean, that's it. That's the best way to do happen, anything. Right, right. If it's going to happen, the other person should do it. Right. Yeah. Make them pursue you and then get mad at them that's when they date right. somebody else. That is, that is exactly right. If they're interested in somebody else when you're liking them, they don't need to know whether you like them or not, but that should anger you. How dare them? How dare them? But, you know, if something were to happen and they were about to get married, my suggestion to you would be, Maybe if it's an outside wedding, uh, a plane with like letters on the back. Yeah, you don't want to let them get married. Right. This so. is this is right before the wedding. Like right before the I do's. I, it, is there anyone that objects? Have the plane go over then. Maybe draw out. I like you. I'm interested in you. Yeah. You can pay for that many letters. <laughs> I would suggest that. Um, and if if this is on a lower level, maybe you're just wanting to get to know them more. Uh, compliment them. Uh, you know, constantly, con- constantly, and uh, very specifically. So, if if this is a girl going after a guy, definitely, um, if say that he's a Christian and he does something well in church, go up to him afterwards. Tell him he'd be a good leader of a household. Tell him he he oh, that uh, would go over great. Yeah, I mean, it makes the guy feel very special, and that you're thinking about them. So, anyway, so that'd be the best advice in the world for that situation. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, we really appreciate you uh, sticking around with us. Uh, thank you for you know continuing to listen even on the the break that we had. I don't know how my schedule is going to work out with your schedule, Garrett, and how all that's going to work. Hold up, so the holdups, you man. I know, man. I know. <laughs> but uh, we we'll we'll try to work it out to where we can uh, record every week or every other week. It just didn't work out this time, so apologize. We apologize for that. Um, but. Hopefully we will have uh, more episodes in the future. Our next one's number 10, so maybe we'll have to do something special for that. Big one zero. All right, guys. Well, we want to give Katie a big shout-out for her excellent work on the show, Uh, all the music, that kind of thing that she does for us. 
uh, suggestions. She does a lot for us, so we really appreciate her. I want to thank Kevin for his help in recording the jingle. I want to thank Justin and Steven for their jokes. And here at the close, what? Wh- who do you think won this week? Yeah, we need to. Who do you think that. won? Uh, I would go. I have to lean Justin. I, I have think to lean Justin. Little, too. I think it's a little bit funnier. I th- I, I it it caught me off guard because I thought the punchline was going one way. I thought it was gonna be you know how it right. keeps going and going, uh-huh. but then it's something that's so simple like. Oh, we got arrested for battery. Yeah. So I, it, it, I thought it was a little bit funnier. I, I agree. That will be to uh, much dismay of uh, Mr. Steven, but I don't know. Maybe I'll have to go with Mr. Steven because I'm intimidating by him. No, no I'm just kidding. Uh, I think Steve, uh, Justin won as well. What do you think, Joshua? Definitely. He thinks Justin as well. So, Justin, you tied it up. It's two to two. Uh-oh. So, we got a game going. Uh, so anyway big thanks to them for their jokes we want to thank our editors Caleb and Corbin for all their help on the show and this week we want to give a big shout out and thank you to Joshua for him uh, helping us out so we're actually recording this pretty late at night so it's the latest we've ever recorded and he stuck in there with us so we won't uh, appreciate him you're welcome uh, I want to thank Garrett for uh, helping us, uh, helping me out with this show, being my partner with this. I, I'm enjoying it, man. It's I know awesome. you are too. We're having, a, we're having a great time. So thank you for joining me, and I want to thank you, the listener, for joining us today on the show. Uh, we wouldn't be anything without y'all, and we really appreciate the support that y'all give us. So uh, anyway, we'll catch you next time. Remember to stay upside up in this upside down world. We'll see you next time. Bye. It shows up on the thing.